Uh, greetings. Just a quick note. Uh, I know in the past I have griped a bit about the victory conditions of my favorite game here, Magic Realm. I was talking uh, Friday with Scott, and again, I, I went on a little bit of a, a tangent about how I don't feel the hero's journey works for me in these epic board games, like Magic Realm and like Dragons Down, um, where the story is that you go from place to place and you slowly, slightly get more powerful and you just continue doing that. Like, that's not quite good enough to to hold my attention. As a victory condition, the games are fine, right? And Scott, you know, uh, Demirs, who wrote uh, Dragons Down, did come in and reply and say, hey, you know, you really ought to try the scenarios because they add, you know, a bit more of those interesting story bits like mysteries or, right, you know, where, whatever. He didn't say werewolves, but you, you, that, that's the idea. And And I just... I realize a couple things. I, I keep explaining this one thing I don't like about these games over and over. And I realize, of course, it's just me. <laughs> like, it literally is just... This is a, a problem with me. There's there's a couple reasons why it probably is. But but it's one of those things where if, if I'm explaining myself over and over, it, the problem is me, not the rest of the universe. So I'm perfectly aware of that. Having said that, I'm going to explain it one last time. Uh, before I just go crawl under a rock. <laughs> so, um, because it's not quite, oh, I want more story, because I, I don't want to play Book of Quests. And I probably will try the scenarios in Dragons Down, but that I'm not looking for, um, until I am, but that, that's a different, different beast. Um, but I'm not looking for then this story mode in the game, as opposed to victory point mode. What I'm looking for is a way to make victory point mode not just be a race to play the game like you would play the game. If no victory points existed, you would still play the game the same. That's my problem in a lot of ways with Magic Realm and Dragons Down is the means equal the ends. If you took the victory conditions away, you would just play the same game and write the story down and that would be... It would be the same game. You are literally just measuring how lucky the player was in doing the things that they would have done otherwise. It's not necessarily invalid. It just, to me, is boring to add that victory condition in the game. So... The, and the, the, the example, the thought experiment that hit me was Talisman. Now, God forbid. A as an aside, I now have a, a fantasy where I, I... I try to be fairly... I'm not great at it, but I try to be fairly careful about what I say online because I don't want to be online saying things that say, you know, would be held against me later or would hurt me professionally or you know, would cause my family problems or whatever, right? So I, I try to be, you know, fairly neutral, neutral online. I do now have a fantasy that I go to a job interview or situation and someone goes, aren't you the guy that compared Magic Realm and Talisman? Get out of here. Go. You're fired. <laughs> that's, that's insane. I'd be like, yeah, you know what? You're right, sir. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm out. Um, but the example for this is Talisman, because Talisman is actually fairly simple, and I think it's easy to see. Because in Talisman, the main tension of the game is... Let's ignore PvP for one second, but the main tension of the game is... Do you get stronger? You spend the early part of the game getting stronger, and then the later part of the game using that strength to penetrate into the middle of the board. And the central tension of the game is... At what point do I stop getting stronger and shoot for the middle? And of course, you're in a race with the other players. So everybody is sort of in a little bit of a race, not only to, to get better, but then they're sort of in a race with each other. Who pulls the trigger first? Because pulling the trigger first either means you have an advantage or you die in the middle. You don't make it. And so 
or you get kicked out or whatever, right? There, there's any number of things that can happen. But, but the idea is, and it's actually, that's the one part of Talisman I think is well designed, is the, it's, you, you're not just getting more powerful and more powerful until the end condition happens. You are instead getting powerful until you decide to try to trigger the end condition, in which case then the game determines whether you were powerful enough. And that's actually clever. That's the only part of Talisman that is clever, is that part. Because it really makes the, it brings the race to this nice, uh, tense, uh, sort of a uh, crescendo where you go, okay, now I have nine strength. I'm going in. And someone else was trying to get that tenth point of wit or strength or whatever. But you beat them to it. Now let's see if your gamble paid off or you failed. Um, and so Talisman, for all of its flaws, and I'm with Greg Kostikian here, that Talisman's not even a game. <laughs> so... So let's understand something. But I think this one part makes a lot of sense. Now, replace the victory condition of Talisman, which is getting to the center of the, in the crown of command and then picking off your opponents. Replace that with you win by having the most amount of treasures in your pack. And that's it. You've now erased that one interesting tension point. You've made the, the, the means equal to the ends. You have made the journey equal to the goal of the journey. So now you just race around the outer or middle parts of the board, trying to draw as many cards as possible, and you get more powerful. And as you get more powerful, you can kill more monsters. And as you kill more monsters, you can get more treasures. And now you're just trying to accumulate a stack of treasures, which make you more powerful. The tension's gone now. The one sort of decision point in Talisman goes away because you've made the victory conditions equal to just playing the game to get more powerful. That's what I feel like Magic Realm and Dragon's Down's victory conditions sort of feel like. You find the decision tree, and, and let, let's ignore Dragon's Down so that we're not talking about, you know, because um, let's just talk about Magic Realm for a moment. Strangely enough, the decision-making tree in Magic Realm is actually not that big. For all of its bits and all of the complexity of it, the decision tree is, do I need to rest or heal? And if not, is there a site that I know that's close by that I can, you know, loot, right? And, and, and by can I loot means can I loot it? with the danger that's inherent in the hex. So for instance, let's say you know, oh, there's there's the um, the horde and I know that I can't beat the, uh, the the flying dragon, but I can run from him. And the other uh, a counter in that hex is a single counter that brings, say, I don't even know. I'm, I'm a, but let's say giants. Let's pretend. It says it's giants. And you can run from them. So it's either giants or the tremendous dragon. You can run from both of them. So the danger is low. And you would go loot that. Done. Let's say it's the pool. And the other thing in there is bats or the goblins or something like that. And you go, well, maybe I don't want to do that because I can't because because if the if the let's say it's let's say it's it's the worst. It's ruin C and the pool. And God forbid, in a cave. At that point, you realize, well, if I roll a three, there's a one in six chance. I'm going to get then pinned by the, the, the octopus while six goblins kill me. That's high danger and might not be worth looting the pool. But that's your most of your decision tree. Most of your decision tree is just to look and go, I can you know, and, 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 and at some point in Magic Realm, you will know enough about the board and your character and your chits and the monsters that come to go, yeah, that's a no-go. That that's a we're gonna pass on that. Or we're definitely gonna we're gonna loot the horde out because nothing can come to me in this hex that actually worries me, because I will run as soon as that thing comes. 
or I can kill it, or I can kill it if I'm hidden, right? There, there's, there's, a, you know, it's not that the decision tree is is totally linear. It's that it really isn't that wide if you think about it. And so, if you look at it like that, then, you know, then it really comes down to, do I need to heal? Do I need to rest, right? Um, am I cursed? Do I have to get back to the chapel to do something? Do I need to sell? Can I, is there a visible site that I should be looting? And if not, I need to go hide and turn over a six clearing tile to get the chits to see and then make my assessment of that, of that hex. That's the whole game. Now, in Magic Realm, the base game differs a little bit in the sense that based on the character you're playing, based on the victory conditions you chose, you might go, well, I'm going to prioritize sites with spells over killing monsters because I didn't take fame and notoriety, but I took spells or great treasures. But a lot of times, those some of those are suboptimal choices. I don't know what the current meta for victory conditions is because I haven't played with the base victory conditions in a very long time. But I'm sure that going for each character, someone uh, that someone has p printed out a, yeah, you should just do uh, three fame, two notoriety, or two fame, three, or whatever, right? Or you should just do one gold, two, for, right? Because that, boom, that's that's how this goes. Um, and for each character, there's probably a pretty optimal, optimal way to go about it. Given that the board is randomized, frankly, and you don't, you know, you don't necessarily know. And I think Dragon's Down has a similar uh, uh, sort of vibe to it in the sense that finding sites also means that you're finding epic treasures, that you're finding spell books to read spells from. You're probably, you know, whether you're killing a monster or not, largely is random, but the sites you meet are random. Like, you're not going to, you know, right? And I think in some ways, to a small degree, Dragon's Down suffers a little bit, even more than Magic Realm, because the board is randomized. And at least in the base game, though this isn't scenarios, but in the base game, you get points for everything you do. So there isn't even that tension of, well, I took fame, so looting this site actually isn't as valuable as going and killing that giant. So let me not loot the site and go kill the giant because I have more points in fame than I do gold or great treasures. So I need to kill more than I need to loot. And so there's more of that decision tree. I could loot the site and get more powerful, or I could go kill the giant and score my points and dragon's down doesn't even have that because killing a giant is going to score you points finding sites is going to score you points what you ought to do is find sites because that's the fastest way to score points is find sites get treasures get spell books read get the spells etc and then killing monsters becomes sort of a, a side hustle as it were you, you get you still get points uh, and, and so on so adding some extra twist to the victory condition. So in Magic Realm, adding the quest things puts stuff on the board, right? And so now you look and go, well, I could go there and get the thing on the board, or I could go and loot this site. Looting this site does nothing for my score, but it makes me more powerful. And it could do stuff for you in the score because of the way the victory conditions are. But but going and getting the young knight there is going to absolutely increase my score. And it might make me a little more powerful. And so there, there becomes then the central tension. Do you just play the game as normal, which is going to make you probably more powerful by the end of the game, but probably not score you as many points? Or do you run around and try to collect the victory points from all the cards that appear. And doing that is probably not making you much more powerful, but it is getting you closer to victory. And there you go. There's the scent there. That's that in my mind 
is then the central tension of Magic Realm when I play my quest variant is I can go for power or points and they don't always cross. And, and I think part of this is, again, it's, it's, it's a me thing in that um, I do play multi-handed and solo. So just if I just ran the characters around and they just did stuff and scored, they're, it's just not that interesting. Whereas all the bits and bobbles on the board and all the little victory points and all the thing right on the board really do amp up the interest for me. So again, understand that that some of this just has to do with the way that I play. I would get really bored if I was just sitting there getting fame and notoriety, right? If I was playing the optimal berserker where I just go kill certain things and... and Right, just yeah, just is not going to hold my interest for a hundred games or whatever. Um, so I'm not looking for. So as Scott uh, uh, put it, which with the, the post that sort of kicked this explanation video off, um, I'm not really looking for a, a more role playing experience because I have role playing games. So I don't I don't need a a more role playing esque experience. I don't necessarily mind it. I don't think that's bad. Um, but I don't need it. What I need is I need a better sport, as it were. I need a better, when I'm playing three-handed or four-handed Dragons Down solo, I need a little bit better tension, central tension to the game, as opposed to, hey, we all go look for sites. Who was luckiest finding the sites and who was luckiest finding the spell books, etc.? That's that's sort of what it comes down to. If playing solo with your friends, you go, I don't care what happens really. I could lose or win this game. I don't care what the score ends up, but I'm gonna try to beat you, but you know, but I know that it's luckier than most uh, than 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 not. And so I'm just looking to have a laugh and we all do stuff and oh you got killed by the treants, haha, <laughs> that's funny. Oh crap, I got killed by a giant bat, how embarrassing, right? Or whatever. That's okay if you're playing with your buddies and having beers or whatever. But if I'm playing alone, multi-handed, trying to have a, a race and keep that race interesting, then I want something else in there. Um, it's also very war gamey to me, right? I mean, you know, war games, although sometimes they are just kill, you know, meeting engagements. You go, yeah, kill as many guys as possible, right? But... You know, the interesting war games for me are ones where, you know, killing guys is sort of secondary to getting to the objectives and maintaining the objectives and what risks are you willing to take to hold or, or obtain those objectives. And that's sort of what I see. And and I do think that I will probably be, whew, it's, it's going to be a long haul, probably going to be creating a quest variant for Dragons Down, but that's a big deal with a lot of cards and a lot of pieces and so on and certainly not um you know not not super not not super trivial to uh to make happen so so that's it i just wanted to explain one last time my my it's not a con condemnation of either game it's more just a you know how do i think about how do i think about these games and how do i consider these the the victory conditions and what am I looking for? And that hopefully gives you sort of that idea. I'm looking for the victory conditions to add to the tension, to add a point, a pivot point, which I don't feel that they tend to do on base game. And that's it. Thank you for listening to this 20-minute uh, uh, rant, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.